Let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast, a historical moment is going on at the southern border. And I don't mean the fact that 300,000 illegal immigrants were allowed into America just in December. December alone. I'm not making that up. You'll see more about it in the episode. But... Texas is actually standing up to the federal government. It is Greg Abbott, the governor, versus Joe Biden. Now, I've had some not-so-great things to say about Greg Abbott, but I love what he's doing right now. So there's going to be a whole breakdown of stuff that I'm going to do for you right now. We're going to be hearing a lot about Greg Abbott. Obviously, we're going to start with Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz. They're talking about the immigration situation, how crazy it is. And they're discussing Greg Abbott. Then you're going to hear Greg Abbott speak. Then you're going to hear him speak with Tucker Carlson. Then you're going to hear a gentleman who is hosting a trucker convoy along the southern border in support of what Greg Abbott's trying to do. Then we're going to talk a little bit about those who are getting hurt by this border being open like this. And it's not who you think. It's actually the people who are trying to get in. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of that. So the border actually needs to be sealed up to help those people. Then we're going to talk about Greg Abbott <laughs> discussing. Joe Biden needing to get fired, the 25 governors who have come to the aid of the state of Texas. Uh, Brian Kemp is one of those governors. He's going to speak a little bit. A border patrol expert or a border expert speaks a lot of truth. And then we're going to end it out with Ken Paxton, the uh, attorney general of the state of Texas, breaking down why the Democratic government is choosing to do things like this. He just lays out the whole plan doesn't hold back at all let's get right into it do not forget about i am coach i know this was a long intro but i had to give it to you guys this is a long episode i think don't forget about i am coach we got public enemy number one we got the great resist and we also have george orwell was right discount code is i am coach Colin, all capital letters all one word one l in the name Colin. let's get into this we're not giving ukraine any more money right we're giving them a lot more money yeah that was one of the things that uh, they were arguing about that they have to do both. They were they wanted the Ukraine budget to be lumped into the border fixing budget. Joe, it's wild. That fucking border. It's a wild thing. It's a that, wild thing. That doing. border was Abbott is doing down there, telling mm-hmm. those motherfuckers to step off and shit. And... I met Abbott a few times. He's a good man. I like that guy a lot. You know, the sending the buses filled with immigrants to the sanctuary cities is such a crazy move. <laughs> like fuck you. You take care of them. You're just letting them in. Your policies are letting them in. You're encouraging people to go there because you're a sanctuary city. Good, we'll help you out. We'll help you out. We'll, we'll bring them right to you. And now the same politicians that were running on this platform, this mystery, it's a fantasy pot. platform. This is a fantasy. Like, come here, we'll accept you all. And let's say that the governor now, she's like, that's enough. No more. There's, you can't come here. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. What does that mean? Go where? They're already here. There's too many. There's millions. You guys have let millions in. There's more illegal immigrants over the last few years than are legal residents in like five states. If you put together like Idaho, Wyoming, you know, like them, them weird states with low populations, what's the number of illegal immigrants that have entered into this country over the last four years? Let's guess. What do you think it is? Millions. Yeah, 100%. Millions. 10 million? Maybe 12. Maybe 12. What do you think it is, James? I saw those fucking lines. Of they don't even know, in. by the way. They're just guessing. They're just guessing. They're just guessing. They're not counting them all. I don't know how to find that number even. Just try to Google no, it. No, I get it. I've tried this before. <clears throat> you can't. I don't know how to differentiate illegal versus legal. And I, they don't really tell you either. Because they have to figure it out themselves. So yeah. You're allowed to cross. But they're trying to make everybody legal. That's part of the hustle. The hustle is make everybody documented. See, when I typed in illegal immigrants entering U.S. 2023, this is what it says. It says there's arrivals of migrants without prior authorization, which I guess that... Tech, I, don't, I don't know if that's even illegal. You know, I don't know. So in one year, um, arrival of ports of entry migrants. But that's ports of entry. That's not like coming in through the border. Right. That's I don't coming no, in through the border. That's like doing a homeless count. Right. Like, how do you? Why really don't you know? Google this? How many uh, illegal immigrants sneak through the border? Just Google uh, that. How would you know that? I don't know. Google it. <laughs> how many? <laughs> how many illegal immigrants? But just do it in my language. Do it. How many illegal uh, immigrants sneak through the border? Write that. Sneak. 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 Or sneak. sneak. Sneak through the border. Let's see what's up. Record numbers. Okay, this is real recent. December 20, uh, 24th. Click on that. What does it say? It said something like 50,000, but I don't, it still is like. How many? Per day? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, 50,000? No, it can't be that much, is it? That's crazy. I'm going to see that number now. What does it say? Why? Okay. Before I, oh, oh what happened? 
there was a number. There it goes. Okay. In just the last five days, Border Patrol processed nearly 50,000 miles. Whoa, five days. Who entered the U.S. illegally, with daily apprehensions surpassing 10,000 tw- thrice, up from the 6,400 average last month. According to federal data obtained by CBS News, roughly 1,500 immigrants are being processed each day at official border crossings under the Biden program powered by a phone app. But that's not sneaking across. That's why I was like, that's not answering the question you asked. It says, But they are. It says entering the U.S. illegally. But they're processed. So right. It's not sneaking. Right, but they still made it across illegally. They entered in illegally. That's just what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying sneaking in, but that's really what it is. They're processing anybody, but they're just letting them go. This is what's crazy. They're processing you, but it's a bullshit. They don't, they don't tell you you have to go back. There's no going back. You go in. And they give you a phone. They give you money. A phone? Yeah, some places they're giving people phones. And so if it's, let's say if it's, go back to that, it's past 10,000, it's past 10,000 thrice. So let's just say it's 50,000 so 10,000 a day. If it's 10,000 a day daily, let's, if that's the high end, let's assume that they're not counting them all, and a lot of them sneak through. 10,000, that's 3,650,000 a year? That's a lot. Now, how am I, you know, when I read all this shit, that's and I hear lot. all this shit, how am I supposed to feel? If it really is 10,000 a day, that is fucking bananas. But think about it. How am I supposed to feel? I'm an immigrant. How so am I, I supposed to feel? I got, I, yeah. I got to hear this shit all day long, and I feel terrible about this shit. I would do it. But do you see the lines of the people that are fucking coming it's through? It's nuts. And, you know, listen, I don't know if a lot of people know this shit. Sanitation, police, all this shit in New York, there's no overtime. Mm-hmm. Because all that budget has gone to the migrants. Yeah. And the migrants are not happy. No. They're, they, go, they're losing their fucking minds. But they thought they were going to get jobs. Yeah. They were they're, told they're they were going to get enough. jobs. They're trying to start families. There's nothing there there's for them. Now they're homeless. And, they're like, and, you why know, don't we come out here to be homeless? The sanctuary cities? Now, I don't even know. In New York City is a sanctuary city? Yes. Okay. Whoever made that didn't check with the people. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoever said, we're a sanctuary city in New York City, didn't check with the people but in the community. But you know what it is? It's just letting everybody know you're not racist. You're not racist. You have no problem with immigrants. Well, we're not like, racist. We're, we're not, of course. We're but, not racist, but I see that my friend who's got two children that depends on overtime from the sanitation department can't get it. He's a supervisor. He lost thousands in fucking salaries. Because it's all going to this. To the migrant thing. And so cops, no overtime. You know, so this is what this is doing. You know, And this just isn't New York. It's got to be in Chicago. all the big cities. Chicago Houston, has a big problem with it. Texas, yeah. Houston. You know, mm-hmm. And what comes from this? You don't know. Again, we're going back to the Mariel thing. I don't know who the fuck is coming in. Yeah. I don't know if they raped 22 women. I don't know if they raped 22 boys. Yeah. I don't know if they're perfect fucking citizens. I, right. We don't know. These we things. don't know. So we're, you know, this was just something. Listen, when I think of politics, I don't get involved, Joe Rogan, because it scares me. The only thing that doesn't scare me is how a man, how a man can have 20,000 indictments and still lead the presidential fucking <laughs> in our country. This is why America's America. How can fucking somebody have 92 fucking indictments? He's in New York yelling yesterday. Yeah. But he still has 50% of the fucking country on lockdown. Right? Isn't that like he has, he's beaten Nikki Haley and the other guy. Well, because it, you know, he's talking about Joe Biden, right? I know. I know. I know. He's a beast, that guy. Uh, (laughs) Obviously, he's talking about Donald Trump, but let's get into the rest of this, man. There is a whole lot that I want to show you guys. Let's start with Greg Abbott. And just by the time you're done listening to this, you're going to know everything that's going on with Texas currently. And I'm going to keep on it as it develops because it's the greatest state and it might become one of the greatest countries. <laughs> Depending on how this plays out, it might become its own country, one of the greatest countries in the world. You never know. They already got a GDP that's bigger than Canada's. So let's, let's, uh, let's get into this first clip. Let me pull this up for you guys. Let's go. He had asked the president eight times to help with no response, giving him constitutional authority to protect the state from an invasion. That's a little strange because we're not talking about a declaration of war by a foreign country. We're not talking about a military invasion. Dallas appellate lawyer David Cole thinks the invasion argument has some weaknesses, but he said Texas may be able to make an argument on exactly how much control over immigration the federal government actually has. How much preemptive power does federal law have in those areas? Is it automatic? The entire area is taken off the table for a state to ever talk about, or is it more limited? Cole agreed. It is very awkward right now having military and law enforcement both on opposite sides of all of this down at the border. The governor also noted today he believes all 25 states that are backing Texas in its efforts would be willing to send troops to help if they're needed. Yeah, big issue. Wow, man, this is crazy. 
Absolutely crazy. Now, that gentleman was kind of doing the argument. We're going to move on to the next clip. But he's kind of arguing that there's some weaknesses in the whole this is an invasion. And I don't really think that there are. When you see the pictures of how many people are coming, when you see the fact that they're running in, run like running, dashing in, when you see the fact that they're throwing away passports so they can come in completely undocumented, completely no name, anything, make up their own if they see fit. And then you see the fact that a large portion, not all, not all, there are women and children, but a, a giant portion is men who are, you know, everybody says like army age, you know, these are like 18 to 25, 18 to maybe 30 years old. These men all coming in completely undocumented. You have no idea who it is. And it's not stopping. That's the thing, right? Maybe if it was like, oh, well, you know, just 400 of you today. Okay. All right. Have a good one. And that's how it is for the month. That's one thing. But when these people come in huge convoys of people, just giant lines of people, and they're all coming to come into the country and they want to do it illegally, I think that's kind of grounds for an invasion, especially when sanctuary cities like New York went from saying everybody can come here to this is destroying our city. If thousands of people come in illegally and it destroys a city like New York, I think you kind of have the argument of an invasion. And again, especially when it's not stopping. Let's move on to the next clip. Greg Abbott, a little bit more uh, about him, and then we're going to hear him and Tucker actually speak. Let's go. This is Governor Greg Abbott refusing to give up control of the Texas border to federal officials, saying the state will not give federal agents full access to Shelby Park today. That ignores a deadline set by the Biden administration, which is today. Instead, Abbott is installing more razor wire following a Supreme Court order allowing federal agents to start removing it. Texas now receiving support from 25 Republican governors, all backing Governor Abbott's border actions, blaming the Biden administration for the crisis. Former President Trump wants to take it one step further. He's now encouraging these states to deploy their National Guard troops to Texas to prevent illegal crossings. Trump's vowing that if he becomes president again, he's going to work with Abbott to seal the border, writing, quote, those Biden, uh, Biden says let in those should not get comfortable because they will be going home. Uh, I want to bring in Texas Congressman Lieutenant Colonel Keith Self. Uh, Congressman, good morning. Um, you know, Governor Governor Christy Noem already saying, yes, I would send National Guard troops. Uh, is that something that you think that, that Texas is open to? And is that a move that needs to be made now? Well, that will be up to uh, Governor Abbott. But uh, I, I think the border has now reached the boiling point uh, that you now see governors getting involved. We have a trucker convoy coming down to the border. Uh, the American people are going to have to get involved. I'm delighted to see 25 governors support uh, Governor Abbott. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to be aware that the president can federalize the National Guard, but it would be much harder if 25 governors sent nat their National Guard troops to the border to support Texas. You know, crazy. Oh, yeah, 25. If 25 each send 5,000, it's a done deal. But then that becomes such an odd standoff because now it's basically biden just being like you know eating ice cream and i don't care what happens to anybody <laughs> i've said this so many times on the channel you know inclusivity people want to be inclusive to the point of destroying other things you know and let's just go with the thought process that this is about inclusivity which it's not it's a, it's about voters it's about so many other things but you're willing to stand up against a governor who is pleading, not just for himself, but again, I bring up New York again, uh, Baltimore, Chicago is going through it, California is going through it. A lot of people just point at California and say homeless, but you know who a lot of those homeless people are? It's people that come over illegally. That's that's a real thing. So it's not just like Abbott is just kind of being selfish and like, I don't want this in my state. The people that come in go all over the country. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I just think it would be a very it's very interesting to see that the Biden administration is willing to have a standoff versus just securing the border, not sealing it, not making it so no one can get through, but just securing it. Like just what Trump was saying, just build a wall 
and you know people can't come through let's just make it cement let's make it so people can't come through exactly what poland did poland did it excellently zero zero people came through port <laughs> um poland's border just so you know they handled it really well so i i don't know i i just don't get it why not just do that why not just seal it up and still let people in it's not like Everybody on the left tends to act like this is an argument to have no elite, no immigrants, period. Like this is a war against immigrants. And it's not. It's a war against the ones that come illegally. There's still others that are coming over, plane, landing, here's my visa, this, that, going to go to the office, straighten this out, straighten that out, long process. Like there's still people doing that. This is not a war on immigrants. This is not a hateful thing. And that's the thing. It always gets depicted as very hateful. Let's move on to the next clip. What do we got here? Uh, oh, we have Abbott actually speaking this time. So he's just breaking down what he's doing, why he's doing it. Let's. What federal statute may exist. The supremacy, the supremacy clause means that the Constitution itself is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution itself provides Texas with a right of self-defense in this case, because the United States has abandoned its responsibility to defend Texas. Former President Trump is among a growing number of Republicans rallying behind Governor Abbott in the escalating fight with the federal government. Trump is also calling on Republicans in Congress to oppose a bipartisan deal on border security. Now those move the wire, but there's been no decision yet on the case as a whole. I just want to hear Governor this Abbott again. I'm just gonna, I just want to hear this again, because I think it's very important here. As Texas is doing what it has to do with the backing of the Constitution. Regardless of what federal statute may exist. The supremacy, the supremacy clause means that the Constitution itself is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution itself provides Texas with a right of self-defense in this case because the United States has abandoned its responsibility to defend Texas. Wow, very interesting. Somebody actually following the Constitution? Tr trying to follow the constitution not alter it not change it not push it to the side <laughs> wow these are some some revolutionary ideas this guy has going on this abbott character um now we're gonna actually hear uh greg abbott speak with tucker carlson but i just wanted to play that again because it's the the constitution it's so important it's so, so important for times like this where you think that a state is just powerless and all this stuff's just happening when in reality there is this massive, beautiful document that has been set up so the federal government or the Biden administration can't just go tyrannical and do whatever it wants. So it's beautiful what he's actually doing. It's actually so beautiful and could turn out really bad. And I hope it doesn't. But, you know, time will tell and I'll be covering it. Let's go. Tucker Carlson, Greg Abbott. On Monday, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the Biden administration is legally allowed to open the border by force to cut down razor wire along the Rio Grande sector of the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas. The usual suspects voted for this, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, Kentaji Brown-Jackson, but they were joined by so-called conservative justices John Roberts and Amy Coney Barrett. So in response to this ruling, which shocked many, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, drafted a letter, not simply to the administration, but to the world. And here's part of what it says. Under President Biden's lawless border policies, more than 6 million illegal immigrants have crossed our southern border in just three years. That is more than the population of 33 different states in this country. This illegal refusal to protect the states has inflicted unprecedented harm on the people all across the United States. Abbott goes on to say the state of Texas has the authority under the Constitution to, quote, protect itself. That authority is the supreme law of the land, and it supersedes any federal statutes to the contrary. And then, following very quickly, 25 other states with Republican governors signed a letter pledging their support to Texas and its constitutional right to defend itself and this country. Those states include Ohio, Florida, Utah, Nevada, and many others. And then the Biden administration responded. The administration threatened these states, and particularly Texas, with a, quote, 24-hour deadline to allow Border Patrol to reopen the border and to take down the barbed wire. Clearly a collision course. What happens next? We're thankful to be joined now by Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, who joins us by phone from India. Governor Abbott, thank you so much for joining us. If the administration 
declares that it plans to federalize the National Guard of the state of Texas, your National Guard, what will be your response? Well, first, I'll be shocked. That would be a boneheaded move on his part, a total disaster. Uh, But for one, as you might imagine, we are prepared uh, in the event that that unlikely event does occur to to make sure that we will be able to continue exactly what we've been doing over the past month. And that is uh, building these barriers, uh, whether it be the Constantino wire or other uh, anti-climate border barriers, whatever we've been building, the Biden administration uh, is now trying to attack us because of it. uh, And we will continue to do exactly what we're doing to expand our denial of illegal entry into the state of Texas. It, the, with state employees, I assume, not with National Guard, but w- w- can you envision a scenario in which you would put armed state employees on the border instead of the National Guard of Texas? We, we do have other armed state employees uh, on the border as we speak right this minute, and uh, that's the Texas Department of Public Safety, as well as other law enforcement officers, as well as National Guard from other states. And you can be assured there will be more National Guard from other states and more law enforcement officers within the state of Texas and other states. And, Tucker, I just signed a law, a new law in the state of Texas that will go into effect on March the 5th that authorizes any law enforcement officer in the state of Texas to be able to arrest anybody coming across the border illegally. Have you spoken to the president or anyone from the Biden White House about what appears to be uh, an imminent collision? I have not, to be clear. Uh, I have spoken to the president about the border. Uh, I met him on a tarmac in El Paso and talked to him directly about what was going on. I handed him a letter that had in it immediate solutions he could take that would immediately secure the border without the need of any new law to be passed. Despite the fact that I handed him uh, on altogether eight different letters, he has refused to ever respond. My point in telling you that we have laid down the precursor of what's called Article Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution to show that uh, we have been invaded and we have demanded support from the president to safeguard our state. And they have refused to do so eight times. And that authorized me to uh, uh, to declare an invasion under Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution to make sure that Texas is going to be able to use every tool in our arsenal to defend our state. Uh, Of the couple of dozen Republican-led states who've pledged support for you, um, how many do you think would send National Guard to Texas? I'll be shocked and disappointed if almost all of them do not send. There there have been about 10 so far that have sent National Guard or uh, other law enforcement. They now are joined together with us. And this is a fight for the future of America, and they all know it. And so I believe that they will all be in on this effort. It's it's just a remarkable moment, uh, and I know you're heading out. But my final question is: How do you see this resolving? What happens next? Well, Texas is going to continue to a- expand the border barriers that we are erecting, the razor wire that we're putting up, uh, and to continue to gain control of more land uh, over the coming months. I believe, however, that this will all come to an end on January the twentieth. Of next year, because I believe a new president will be sworn in, a president who will actually enforce the immigration laws of the entire country, not just the Texas border, but New Mexico and Arizona and California and the Canadian border also. Uh, and we will have safe and secure borders once again, because we will have a president who actually will enforce the laws of the United States of America. But in the next year, are you concerned about any kind of conflict between state Uh, forces, whether state employees or National Guard and federal forces? So, Tucker, all we can do is be as prepared as possible, deploy as many people as possible, uh, do as much as possible uh, to put up more border barriers uh, and deny illegal entry. Uh, And our head is down. We're working hard, uh, regardless of what the Biden administration is doing. Governor. Wow. Wow, man. Sounds like he's ready for whatever which is wild to think about. And it's so crazy. You know, I, I in the comments, you know, I get into with people in the comments, you know, I go back and forth sometimes. Somebody was like, oh, but Trump, I don't like Trump. He, he wants immunity. You know, this guy wants presidential immunity. And I was like, but you have you already you have a president right now who <laughs> who could seal a border and ignores people who actually have solutions, refuses to respond to them. Uh, leaves the border open 
is engulfed in all sorts of odd legal trouble via his son. None of it seems to affect him. Everything is just like, ah, no, no, no. All his administration just says, nah, he's the best. He's the best one we've ever had. You guys are crazy. You already have a president who thinks he has immunity. You already have one. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But the fact that uh, Greg Abbott has actually tried to resolve this kind of makes me look at him differently because before that, I was very much not a fan of his because he had the border open for so long. Tucker Carlson even talked about trying to ask him about the whole situation and saying, hey, can you please, like, why aren't you closing the border? And he was talking about how it's more complicated than that. And it was, a, it was just a whole thing. And also he refused to denounce the WEF. So I didn't like him just based on that. But now I'm starting to see maybe it was a little more complicated. Maybe there were things that had to happen. Maybe he was trying to reach out to the president and say, hey, this needs to happen. Can we do this? And he's trying to go up the proper channels. And now we're just seeing a last resort. I mean, standing up to your own government, you know, federal government. I mean, that, that's pretty much a last resort. That's not something that you do right off the bat. So he probably exhausted every single avenue right up to actually handing a letter to Biden. So kudos to him. I was definitely, if, if that's the case, I was definitely wrong about him. And uh, he seems pretty great. Should denounce the WEF though. That should be a pre, that should be, that should be 101 for every single politician. But uh, let's get into another Tucker clip. He's speaking with a gentleman who's actually hosting, hosting a trucker convoy. He's going to be lining up all sorts of tractor trailers if they haven't started already, but I'm pretty sure it starts in February. But, you know, we'll hear more about it. But basically, he's hosting his own trucker convoy and pray for him because the last people who decided to host a trucker convoy ended up in jail. That's just a fact. That's what happened in Canada. All right, let's get into it. Oh, unmute it. Oh, totally normal. We thought it would be worth talking to Doc Pete Chambers about what he expects to happen with this convoy and his role in it. He joins us now. Doc Chambers, thank you so much for coming on. It's great to be here, Tucker. So um, what can we expect with this convoy? Can you describe what it is and what its purpose is? Right. This is a peaceful assembly. This is what we do as Americans. This is how we get we shed light to a subject. This shedding of the light will result in exposing really what an open border policy looks like yes we know that that you know we know the problem sets in texas but literally i could i promise you this that 40 miles north of that border there will be people that will never have heard of the border problem because they just watch mainstream media yes and so this is what that is about and so can you tell us the route of the convoy and who you expect to join it right uh, so so right now they're going to be leaving out of on the 29th uh, Virginia Beach, which is where the 1607 Covenant, the landing, uh, which signified the uh, John Smith landing in 1607, where they played, yes. planted a cross on the beach and said, hey, we, this is a covenant to this nation, to God. Uh, and, and then they're going to leave from there and they're going to go down through Florida. They're going to cut across Highway 10 through Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Houston, into uh, Dripping Springs, Texas, where I'll be working out of, and then on to near Eagle Pass. Now, I'm part of the advisory of this, and, and as, I, as I advised, I used to be in that same unit that's down there. That's the unit that has a streamer on it from the Alamo. It's very historic Texas unit. And so they are down there holding line. And I know those soldiers. I worked with them. I, 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 I took care of them as a doctor with uh, Operation Lone Star. They're busy. So the, the, the convoy is going to go just a little bit shy, just a little bit to the north, really, uh, in, a, in an area about 30 miles away in Kimado, Texas, to a children's camp, a lady, a beautiful lady down there who has taken care of orphans and widows. You can't write this stuff in a book. I, I couldn't make this up. But she was overrun, first of all, by the COVID mandates that said you got to shut down. You can't keep running this shelter, number one. Number two, she was overrun by the numbers of, of volumes of uh, illegals that were coming through her neighborhood trying to get into her food pantry. And then number three, the cartels are a significant presence in that area because that is the end point of where they do the end around. So we are looking at the bright, shiny object that is Eagle Pass. That's a bright, shiny object. Look here. The droids that you're not looking for, if you will, are just to the north, right in that location. And so what, what this is going to do is it's going to bring light to it because we have to understand that there is a constitution, both state and federal, and that we have to, number one, 
expose those that argue things in the Hegelian dialectics, if you will, of tort law, and look at the Constitution, which is exactly what this is a focus. On the Constitution, we the people. That's why we the people will be riding along, mama bears, cops, veterans, truckers, uh, and going to that location to bring light. There is nothing nefarious about this. There is, matter of fact, I am suggesting to them that they, that they, and they know this, they know this, that this is a peaceful demonstration. This is, this is how this will be. Absolutely amazing. Again, starts on the 29th, I stand corrected, and then it said, I think it said the final rally locations will be held on February 3rd. Um, that gentleman there will be hosting it. And uh, yeah, it's a, a historical moment, honestly. This is, this is very, very wild. I don't think people really register how crazy this actually is. Um, but I was going to, I was just actually going to touch on just real quick, you know, migrant, uh, woman and two children, they drowned, you know, um, if, if the borders were more secure, you know, the, the, that's the reason I bring that up. If the borders are more secure and there wasn't such a likelihood that they would get in if they just got there, that woman wouldn't have done that. She wouldn't have had to do that. And for some reason, when you look at that, and I think I've, I've might have even brought this up before. When you look at that, for some reason, Texas, the people, the, the, the Greg Abbott and his people are looked at as the bad guys in that situation. When in reality, if the Biden administration had just sealed up the border properly, those people wouldn't have got word that they could just swim through or just walk through and then they're safe, they're in there and they won't be turned away. If that wasn't the case, she would have never tried to get there with her children. It's a very sad case, but, you know, making a very strong border, very secure border, prompts people to do it legally. You know, I don't, it's very simple. Like, I don't have to go deeper into this subject. Um, real quick, Greg Abbott just talking about Joe Biden uh, needing to be fired, <laughs> which I do. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the border standoff is escalating. Governor Abbott is bolstering the razor wire fence along a border park that's at the center of the dispute. GOP leaders, including the governors of at least seven states, are backing Abbott in this showdown with Biden. Meantime, the president is facing growing calls from Democrat lawmakers to federalize the Texas National Guard. But Abbott says he is not backing down. And what Texas is asserting is our Article 1, Section 10 right of self-defense because the President of the United States is not fulfilling his duty to enforce the laws passed by Congress that deny illegal entry into the United States. The Biden administration has really, truly abdicated its responsibility to secure the border and enforce the laws. Texas, very simply, is securing the border. And so we put up the razor wire that you were talking about, Bill, and we put up all these barricades that actually have denied illegal entry. Uh, and as you pointed out also in that screen, that there are criminals coming across our border. Texas has a right as a state to stop criminals from coming into our state, to make arrests of those criminals. The immigration system and the border issue is the primary issue in America right now. This is an issue upon which Joe Biden gets a grade of F and deserves to be fired. <laughs> Man, he's going in. He's even going in on Biden, like really. But I, I actually, after listening to more of this, I understand why. It's because he's actually been pleading and trying to do things properly with Joe Biden, getting his approval, getting his help. But Biden's just been ignoring him. So I completely understand why he feels that way now and i'm sure there's millions upon millions of millions of people that felt the same way before this even happened so <laughs> let's get into another clip which this one is let's just get right into the 25 governors real quick just so you guys know who those people are um you can't see it really clearly unless you got me on a tv screen or something shout out to those of you that got me on tv screens that's really interesting um we got uh, you guys don't usually see this. We got Alabama. We got Nebraska. We got Arkansas. We got, where's it closer there? Oh, it's closer on this screen. We got Florida, DeSantis. That's exactly where he should be as a governor. Perfect. 
We got Brian Kemp of Georgia. We got Idaho. We got Indiana. We got Iowa. We got, jeez, jeez. We got Mississippi. We got Missouri. We got Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, North Dakota, I, Ida, uh, uh, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, oh, South Carolina, and South Dakota. Christy Nome, she'd be a great, she'd be a great vice president. Um, who else we got here? We got Utah, we got Virginia, we got West Virginia, we got Wyoming. There's a whole lot of guys supporting him and and ladies. There's a whole lot, and uh, I'm hoping that they're wishing they're willing to push it to the limit which it needs to needs to happen not just for the border's sake but to kind of shake this administration up a little bit kind of let them know like hey you can't just do whatever you want and then have your uh, your your press secretary come out and say he's the best president ever that we've ever had and everybody's just going to clap and be placated by that they really start they they really have to be put on notice that if they're not going to hold up their end of the bargain which it comes into play as soon as you get elected, then states are going to handle this on their own and they're going to come together. And it's beautiful to see that they're coming together so they understand that they can do that. And I hope to see that more. I really do. I mean, unless Texas goes ahead and becomes its own state, um, I really do hope to see that. Um, let's get into some of this right here. Next clip. Border expert, just talking a lot of truth here. Let's go. Brandon Judd is the National Border Patrol Council president, and he's with me now. The Supreme Court backs the feds. That means the state is not allowed to take care of the border. Where are we going with this? Yeah, there are two major winners in this and, the, and, and one big loser. The, the winners are the far left agenda and the cartels. The far left agenda, they want to get in as many people as they possibly can before this administration's turn is up. And then you look at the cartels. The cartels want to get as much, they, they want to generate as much profit as they possibly can. And this decision is going to allow them. The major loser is the American people. Citizens are going to uh, see the re repercussions of this because the cartels are going to be able to continue to flood our resources. They're going to be able to take out one of our, our tools that we can use. Even though it was set up by the, by the Texas government, it was a tool that we were able to use to determine where people were, were able to cross. And if we can determine that, we can go after the cartel's profits. Now we can't do that. So the cartels recognize that they can flood our resources in an area. We're then going to have to cut that razor wire, take these people into custody, which is going to pull our resources out of the field. So two winners, liberal agenda and the cartels, one major loser, the American people. That guy just shut it down real quick. We're going to move on. This gentleman here is Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is the attorney general of Texas, and he's basically just laying out what he thinks is going on when it comes to this whole border situation. He is fighting with Greg Abbott. He says he's not going to back down, and he hopes that Greg Abbott doesn't back down either. Let's hear what he has to say. He's talking with Tucker Carlson. And importing people. I just, I think it's going to, as they gain power and they, and they gain more assets, that network is getting built out during Biden's administration and the next president, hopefully Trump, is going to get stuck with dealing with that. So you're the attorney general of one state out of 50. Merrick Garland's the attorney general of all 50 states. If you know this, he must know this. Why has Merrick Garland, apart from the obvious answer, he hates America, uh, but why hasn't he done anything about this? So this, I think this is a plan. I mean, this is clearly a plan, right? This is a strategy. It's just like their election strategy. They have, this is a strategy that started on day one when, when Joe Biden said, well, we're not going to deport anybody. And of course, he brought people in like Merrick Garland, who were fine with not enforcing federal law, who didn't care if the Constitution was was honored by the president or him. And so their goal is simple. I think they it's, it's two things. They want more votes. And this is a way of getting them here. And then they want to give amnesty. And they are bringing them mostly to Republican states. And they also want to hurt Republican states, I believe, because there are costs associated with this. And right now in America, people are voting with their feet. They're leaving California, Illinois, New York. Right. And they're going to Florida and they're going to Texas and they're going to Tennessee. They're going to Republican states because it's a better life. And they don't have to deal with the higher taxes and the regulations. And they're going to have a better life for their families. And so the Democrats realize this. Biden and his team realize this. So part of the, the way of dealing with that is, well, let's just hurt Republican states. Let's bring more crime for them to deal with. 
So it's less likely that people want to go there. Let's bring in more costs. So it's, they have to have higher taxes to pay for all this illegal immigration that they didn't ask for, that the federal government brought to them. So I think it's a twofold strategy. Harm the Republican states, do as much damage. And if it means some kids die or some people die, they are willing to trade that to get the votes and the damage to Republican states. And people would say, how cynical. But I'm looking at what they're doing, not what they're saying. But in the 1980s, when I lived there, California was the richest state, the least corrupt state, had the best schools, the best roads. And now, of course, it's a, the most corrupt state, one party state, and it's un, unlivable. And immigration did that. No other thing did that, just immigration. So why wouldn't that happen in Texas, which has been their goal from the beginning anyway? It's going to happen. It's going to happen all over the country, it's, and particularly in Republican states, because that's where they're bringing most of the illegals. That is the strategy. Fill up the Republican states to deal with the problems, the crime, the, the costs. And then also, hey, there'll be more voters. They'll have kids. Those people will vote. And they presume that those votes will go their way. And that's the strategy, because if you turn this into, if you turn Texas and a few other states Democrat, we effectively are California. We have a one-party system where there's That's not right. accountability, there's not competition, there's not a way for the voters to change things if the system is rigged so that only one party is in power. And that's the, that is ultimately the, the strategy of the Democratic Party, create one party where the voters don't have a choice. Yep, yep. I love that he actually broke it down. And again, that is the current attorney general of Texas. He's not playing around. Very, very He actually, they actually tried to impeach him once. I wonder why. I couldn't possibly understand why they would want to impeach such a man uh <laughs> probably for the same reason that they fired tucker carlson from fox you know speaking the truth too much gets you in trouble but yeah let's end it off with a tweet from tim kennedy as all this was going on tim kennedy says please stand with me please stand with texas this is an all-out invasion we are not a real country without sovereign borders 100%. Like, subscribe, share, share, share. It helps tremendously. And other than that, I'm out.